Hey, what's up guys? In this video I'm gonna show you how to make an e-bike battery out of power banks. As you can see I've got here different types of power banks with different number of cells. So for instance the power bank number one can fit inside four cells. As you can see you just have to imagine how many cells will fit inside. This power bank has 10,400 milliamps as you can see over there. So divided by four cells, it means that each cell have 2,600 milliamps. Basically, you must use power banks which contain cells with the same capacity and preferably equally used in the past in order to keep a good power equilibrium in the e-bike battery you are building. Also make sure that you can collect enough good working cells for your desired capacity and voltage of the new e-bike battery. And finally, the power bank number five we've got inside four cells as you can see it has a total of 10,000 milliamps which results in 2,500 milliamps per cell so this is the type of power bank I'm gonna use I'm not gonna use these now the first step is to figure out how many cells do you need and what type of battery case you're gonna using and of course make space as well for the BMS so in my situation this bracket can contain 52 cells and I'm gonna use just 50. This is how it's gonna look like. This is just a diagram of the battery I'm gonna make. I've got 10 cells in series which will result in 36 volts. This is like the nominal voltage. In real life this battery will be 42 volts when it's fully charged and maybe 35 when it's discharged, completely discharged. So that can change. Don't be confused by this number over here which is 3.7 as a capacity since I'm using 2500 milliamp cells the total amount of the milliamps of the whole battery package will be 12500 milliamps therefore I will have to use 50 cells 10 in series 5 in parallel result in 50 cells one more thing to tell you this is just relatively for my situation as I said I've got here 52 holes for the cells so therefore I'm gonna use these two at the end and I'm going to cut these two over here in order to make space for the BMS I'm gonna put it on top over here because this is the best place since the whole weight of the battery will lean on this side over here because the battery will stay like so on the e-bike so therefore I will place the BMS on top now since I find out how many cells do I need for my e-bike battery I will take a look on the power banks and see how many I have and I've got here 11 power banks which will be a total of 44 cells if they are good of course and then I've got a couple of them here which does not charge or they have problems the cells themselves are okay I test them now depending on from where you get the power banks and how many you can get it's very important that you test them you test the cells before you install them on your e-bike. A good way to do that is to charge them up fully and then let them for a couple of days and then try to charge them again. And if they do charge, it means that some of the cells will not hold the voltage, will not have the right capacity or maybe the whole pack is broken. So that's a way to check them without any cell tester. Now, of course, you might go ahead and buy new power banks which will contain guaranteed good cells because they are tested from the fabric and it's a pretty good uh, safety measure that the cells will be all right but i suppose that you are going to use some old power banks like me if you want to know how to open them just go ahead with a very tiny screwdriver and start from this side where the charger port is because on that side as you can see on this open one there is the board which you can damage, you don't care about this, you care about the cells, you care about protecting the cells and not short circuit them. So start from the top where the charger port is. Just pop it off like so. Then depends of the type of power banks you have, just unscrew the bolts which holds the charging port on. Just pry them off. And as you can see, power is off since these are used power banks they might not charge so a trick is to swap the charging boards with a working one and test the voltage before and after to check if it does charge 
Now, why you want them to be fully charged? Well, because in that way you can test them. Also, you will get an even voltage once the e-bike battery is ready. So you can just rip them off like so. Just be very careful on the positive terminals because it's very easy to short circuit them. If you connect the positive with the whole body of the cell, which is the negative, do not lever the pliers on the body of the cell because that's the positive and it will short circuit it. On the negative terminal, you can be more relaxed because this is not such a dangerous movement to do. Now, just to show you a little quick, this power bank, you remember it was 3.44, now it's 3.48. It means that it's charging. Now you can see on the cells, there are pretty sharp metals left on the terminals. So what you can do, the easy way to remove them is by grinding them up. So before that, make sure that you wear some protective glasses. Again, it's all about preparation, so take your time. Before making any work on them, make sure that they are good. This one should be fully charged, therefore 4.2 or 4.21, even 4.19-18, it's okay. So the cell is good. It has been charged for two days and the voltage did not drop, which means that the capacity is somewhere there. And again, that's how you test them without any capacity tester. Now, if you are going to use a grinder like me, make sure that the angle is in that way and you don't hold it directly like so or very much on the cutting point. You just hold it like, let's say, 25 degrees from the blade to the battery terminal so therefore you will keep the side you will not touch the side you will touch only where you want all right so most of the cells are done I grind them up on the terminals so they are smooth. The number one reason I grind them up is that when I place the nickel strip, it will sit on them perfectly. So there will not be the nivellations or anything in between the nickel strip and the terminal when I am going to solder it. So now I have here a gap of two cells since I'm waiting for one of these batteries to charge up. Meanwhile, I will check the voltage of all these cells. I want all of them to be around 4.20 shouldn't be much above or below that i'm gonna go ahead and make space for the bms hopefully it's gonna be enough now you can see the bms will stay over here but i'm not going to install it now it's gonna be for later when all the cells will be connected with nickel strips for now, I will remove back the plastic case. That's because I will have to now position the cells in the correct order so I can place the cover back. Of course, I have five cells in series, so it means I will have five cells with the positive end on this side and five cells with the negative end on this other side. So let's say this one is the first one with the positive, then the next five are gonna be with the negative up. I finally installed the last cells over here. So I've got the last negative terminal, which are gonna be these five, with the last positive terminal, which are going to be these five. All in between will go like this in waves, basically. All right, next I'm gonna begin to cut nickel strips. I will put some gloves on, some protective glasses and begin to spot weld the nickel strip. I will try to increase a little bit the current. Now you can see the reason why I grind up the terminals since it's very critical to have a flat surface when you solder the nickel strips because if you don't and the spot welder will solder kind of in the air it will spark and it will make a hole into the nickel strip 
and it won't connect properly on the terminal. Now I'm gonna flip it over and connect these five negative terminals together and connect it with these positive terminals. So basically it's gonna be a big group here connected. As you can see, I've connected the positive terminals with the negative ones. All these lines should be occupied by a nickel strip. You can see over here that the nickel strip will stay a little bit over the plastic case. So you have to take it in order. It's very tempting to jump from this one over here and then you have like a like a bend here. That's how it looks like. I've got here the positive terminal and over here the negative terminal. On the other side they are just other connections. So what I'm gonna do next is to place the BMS on. That's how the BMS will sit. You can see there is enough space between the case and the BMS. So I'm gonna place foam in this shape. From now on the process is pretty similar as building any other e-bike battery. You will have to connect the C- from the BMS with the negative terminal of the charging port, the B- with the main negative terminal of the battery pack, and the P- from the BMS connected with the negative discharge terminal of the battery. So I'm gonna place the B- over here. I'm just gonna do the solder in between the cells. Now how do you connect these sense wires? Well, it's very simple once you figure out the first one. If you have a look on this other BMS, you'll find 11 wires, including the B-. And if you have a look on, the, on this type of BMS, there are only 10 wires, so it means the B- is missing. If you look on the diagram they give you, you'll notice that the B- on the right is under the B-, main terminal B-. So if we look on the BMS, the B- is over here. So the first B1 plus is this one, the black one, which will go, we've got here the B1 minus. So I'm gonna go and connect it on the back, on the opposite side, which is the B1 plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the first sense wire. So I'm gonna skip one. I'm gonna go with the B3 plus, B3 plus, which goes on this group over here, on the second group. I'm gonna skip one and go with B5 plus, goes over here. I'm gonna skip one and go with B plus 7. Okay, I'm gonna skip one and go with B9 plus, which is the last one on this side. Alright, so next I'm going to connect the discharge positive wire. Next, I will connect the charging port, the plus terminal of the charging. Next, connect the discharge connector with wires, the plus directly from the battery and the minus from the BMS. While working on it, place some Kepton tape to isolate the terminals and not short circuit them. Finally, secure the work with some hot glue and make sure that the wires are soldered on an angle so there will be enough space between the connector and the battery pack inside the case. I'm preparing now the positive charge terminal. Finally, position the battery pack into the case and see how it fits. Secure the BMS with some extra hot glue and place a piece of foam on top for extra protection against vibrations. If you have space, place a piece of foam on both sides of the battery pack as well as on the bottom. Position the discharge connector on the case correctly. Also carefully mind all the wires while closing the case and tie the bolts until the both sides of the case closes 
completely. Alright guys, that's how you make an e-bike battery out of power banks. Thanks for watching, if you like this video give it a thumbs up and until next time take care and I will see you soon.